Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? So trying to make us feel like Christmas time, make it feel like cold winter weather. And for some, it's, this is cold winter weather. For others, this is like... Anyway, uh, we're glad you're with us this morning. Uh, my name's Jamie. I'm the pastor here, and I want to call your attention to a couple of quick announcements right quick. First off, uh, if you did not grab one on your way in, the hymnals are up here. We're transitioning to new hymnals. And uh, at this point, uh, we don't have enough to put in every few things, so we're trying to figure out how we do this. And we figured the best way was let you pick them up and take them. And then at the end of the service, you can leave it where you are. And the only rule is then, and this makes me a little antsy, but you have to sit there next week. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll try this, and then if that doesn't work, we'll figure out something else. Uh, along with that uh, announcement about the new hymnals, uh, couple things. One, if you would like to purchase a hymnal in honor of or memory of someone, or just to be uh, overly friendly, make sure we can get hymnals for all of the pew holes, uh, you can simply, there's a form, I think, out on the, the gathering table, if you want to make it in memory or honor of someone, or you can simply write out your check and put in the memo a hymnal or a Bible, and we'll get that picked up. I think the, the hymnals are $30 a piece. Is that right? I believe so. So, uh, so if you would like to buy one of those for a hundred, uh, either way it's fine with us. So, uh, and then also with the old hymnals, if you know that you had one of the hymnals that, that you had given or someone had given and, or somehow connected to your family, uh, we would love for you to be able to have that as a, a memento and keepsake. Uh, for the moment, you'll just need to catch up with Roy at the end of the service or at some point. And he can take you through, and y'all can do the, the search to find if there's a particular hymnal you want to you want to find. Uh, after the festival next week, we'll spread them all out where you can look through them easier. But uh, we need to get to that done. If you, if there's one you want, you need to get that picked out before December 10th, because I think December 10th is really December 8th. That's when we yeah. December 8th. So uh, get it done before the 8th, so that. At that point, those things will be making motion wherever it is that they have to go. All right, uh, so that's all that part. Uh, we used the, the new hymnal at the early service, and, and I didn't hear any complaints. I like it. I think it's, it's, uh, it's well done. It's, uh, at a, I think, even a more specifically Wesleyan root than the United Methodist hymnal was. The United Methodist hymnal had done a lot of adaptations and changes and things, and so this goes back to what... Uh, a lot of the, especially the old Wesleyan hymns of, by John and Charles Wesley, goes back to the original lyrics without any kind of adaptation. So, so uh, we'll we'll dive into that and have a good time with that. A couple of other things I want to call your attention to. One is that the Christmas festival is next Saturday, and the preparations will start after the Wednesday night dinner. And that's what I did it again. Uh, I also want to encourage you to grab the red pads and sign in and let us know you're here. Uh, and also your, in, indicate your preferences as for the, the Wednesday night fellowship dinner, which is? Beans and greens and cornbread. Beans and greens and cornbread. Yes. All right. <laughs> so that's the menu for Wednesday night. And the beans will have ham in them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, and then, uh, so all the preparations for the Christmas festival. And if nothing else, you can come, I think there's a, there'll be soup served for lunch that you can purchase as part of the festival on Saturday. So plan on coming and getting a light lunch and, and enjoy that. Uh, and then right after this service, we'll have uh, a decorated party. So if you're interested in that, stick around. Uh, I see Joan sitting in the back there. She's been trying to get things in place and ready. And so we'll, we'll get the church all looking festive and ready for the holidays. So. I think that was all the announcements that I had this morning. Did I miss anything, anyone? Very good. I'm doing well. All right. Then let's turn our hearts and minds towards what we really gathered for this morning. And that's been some time worshiping the God who created us and drew us into this moment. Won't you pray with me? Lord, in this moment, we pause to invite you into this space. We gather for worship. We gather to give you glory and honor. So come, receive this our worship this morning. May everything that we do in these moments bring glory and honor to your name. You who are our strength 
and our Redeemer. We pray these things in the strong and precious name of your Son, Jesus, and all God's children said. Amen. Now we invite you to stand as you're able and join us for our opening hymn, number uh, 84. Now thank we all our God. We'll sing all four versions. Three versions. Three versions.
only member of them, the, their, his family as well. Um, then we're sharing with you a little, a little something I shared at 9 o'clock, and unfortunately, due to, due to the rules and stuff these days, you can't mention names, but I had, I had the, the task last night of being called to take care of a, of an infant, okay? And that's one of the hardest things for somebody in my position to do. But I, I have to, I want to share with this with you briefly. I don't want to get, don't want to get carried away with it. I, I think I may have in mind, but I didn't mean to. <laughs> but this turned out to be, uh, there was such a testimony involved in this. Uh, the mother of this baby uh, had been on meth, had, uh, was on meth. And she quit immediately after she found that she was pregnant. Okay? Uh, she was three weeks short of having the baby, and she fell off the wagon. Mm -hmm. Now, when that happened, um, the very next morning, she didn't no longer, she no longer felt the baby move. She called an ambulance, and on the way to the hospital, in the back of the ambulance, she had the baby. The baby was still born. Beautiful little girl. Gorgeous little girl. And, but in that process, she's been in the hospital a couple of days, and she's, she's being forced to go from the hospital into rehab. Okay? The baby's father was forced into rehab. They're in separate locations, both of which are Christian-based rehabs, which had representatives come and speak to them and talk to them. Now, when I say there's a testimony involved in this, you would have had to have been there to experience just this, just the environment in the room when you were there. Here's dad, of course, was not there. Uh, the young lady was there by herself with the baby. I had an opportunity to pray with her. And the oddest thing came out of her mouth after we prayed. She said, can I pray with you? Okay. Uh, this young lady talked about how the, all she had was a seed of faith. That's all she had was a seed to build from. And that she had given her life. She had spoken with the chaplains. That she was raised in church. She told me a little bit about her background. That she was raised in church. She took the wrong, took the wrong course, took the wrong path in life. But God had really set her down and had really shown her something. And, and it, I, I got, and she said, look at what it took to do this. She said, look at what it took. And I got to thinking about that, that infant. And I got to thinking about where she must be right now. And I got to thinking just a, a host of things about parents who want to but can. And the, the damage that's done. And, and this, that, and that. But what really the focus was on was Christ Jesus. And the fact that that she had given all of this over to God. 100% completely. Now, call me a fool. She may be playing. I, I don't know. But let me tell you, if I've ever felt God's presence anywhere, I felt it yesterday. I felt the hand of God upon that young lady yesterday. More than that, didn't worry about the child. That child is kind of bypassed this world in this room. You know, there's no, there's nothing there. No sin, no nothing. But it was just an amazing thing, and I, and I can't mention this girl's name, but I, I, I want us to keep her in our prayers as well. Because I feel like God is, is, is using her. You know, he will use you in a way that you never thought possible to get his point across. And he will do things in your life that you never thought would ever happen in order to accomplish his purpose. But his purpose is always good. It's always right. It's always correct. It's always done with love for us. And if you could just sense this, this young lady's testimony and what she was saying, she's not worried about rehab. She's not worried about being gone for a year. She's looking forward to it. She wants to start her life over. She wants to be part of a, and this is, she wants to be part, 
She wants to marry this young man when they get out. She wants to be a part of a church. She wants to, she's got a testimony. She wants to share that. She wants to share that with her future husband. Now, I have no clue what's going to happen on the road. None of us do. Okay? God knows. God knows. And if yesterday is any indication, she's definitely on the right path. And I, I was just thinking this morning, I was thinking yesterday, it's, um, it's our responsibility, it's our duty, it's our charge. It's, it's our blessing to pray for her, to pray for her husband to support them in the spirit, to give them the hope that they need, to, to do those things. It's that way for, for all of our brothers and sisters to put aside those things that really sometimes aren't so big to focus on the things that really are and, and to have that, that little bit of faith go into something big, to encourage that. That's our charge. So I want to keep her in our prayers this morning as well. Her and her boyfriend, I guess, is what you'd say. I use the term, I don't know if it's politically correct, I said baby daddy. <laughs> but it's that star high too. But, I, but uh, I definitely want to keep them in our prayers as well. Okay. So are there others this morning before we... Charles Pardon. Yes. Charles Pardon. Uh, Charles Pardon is another local man, uh, been a part of uh, our lives. I've known Charles Parvin ever since I knew him. Uh, him and my daddy were very good friends, and uh, he passed away this past week. And uh, again, he was a vet. Uh, Air Force? Marines. Marines. Marines, okay. Sorry about that, I knew he was a veteran, too, so we're losing some of our veterans. We need to, you know, we need to remember them as well. So, uh, we know that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough loss sometimes. Are there others this morning? Frank. It's the rat in me. Um, she's not she's not nearly as bad as she was, but she's starting to struggle to walk again. Mm -hmm. And I think her vision is starting to go too. Because I'm like, Pepper, and she looks, I'm right here. She goes, What? <laughs> so she's she's old. I think most of that's just coming with age, but just keep her there. God's grace. Absolutely. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Would you bow with me, please? Most kind and gracious God. Heavenly Father, we come to you in this moment. In this moment, to thank you for your goodness. To thank you for your grace and your mercy on us. But most of all, thanking you for the gift of salvation. We thank you that you allow us to have just that little seed that we need. But you give us everything that we need to nurture and to help it grow. Father, we thank you for your blessings today. And we lift up those in our community, and in our church family who are hurting. We lift up Sandy to you this morning, and Randall, and all and Joy, and Father, the, all of your creations that you give to us, your, our pets, our animals, everything that you make is precious. And we lift up the families of those who have gone before us. We lift up the family of Mike, the family of Charles, and the family of Sandy. And this young lady that we spoke of earlier, Father, I just ask that you have your hand upon her, that you would guide her path, that you would place her in the steps that she needs to be placed in, that her thoughts be your thoughts and your thoughts be hers. Father, we thank you for our church today. We pray for those who are involved in, in situations that they cannot get out of. We pray for our country. We pray for those in wars and who are being hurt and sought after and needlessly harmed. Father, we just ask that you grace and your mercy be seen through all of that. 
Now, Father, as we as we further pray, we ask you to help us to, to think about and remember the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he said to them, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please stand and turn to page 691. 691 the Apostles' Creed. I don't know where I have to look. You look. <laughs> I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Because to me, as I was listening to it the first time, it, instantly I started thinking about the opportunities that were wrapped up in that story. Uh, as we, Brian had an opportunity to represent Christ in that moment, and he did. Uh, and then come to find out that she had been having opportunities all through and had uh, responded to an opportunity to, to set a better path and, and to get a focus of Christ. And, uh, what I find is that we have all these opportunities that surround us. And uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today is opportunities. And one of the definitions of the word opportunity that Miriam Webster offers is it's a good chance for advancement or progress. We often talk about these opportunities in terms of missed opportunities or taken <coughs> opportunities. But my grandfather, he had an opportunity when he was a younger man to buy some of the original shares in the Coca-Cola Corporation. He passed. He missed the opportunity. And after we all had a conversation about this, we, we, uh, we mourned that, that decision. Uh, because we kind of all thought, man, I bet the Hudgens clan would have looked very differently had he bought the shares at that point, because uh, they would have been worth millions today. Anyway, uh, every single day, we are offered opportunities, some good, some bad, uh, and one of the opportunities that crosses my mind, I don't get to exercise it very often, but it would be the opportunity to just not set the alarm clock and just go to bed knowing that I can just sleep until my little eyes wake up. <laughs> I don't get to do that very often, do, but, but these are the kind of opportunities that roll across, and, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Opportunities come at a point of decision. 
it boils down to this. When you have an opportunity, you get to make a choice. And today we're going to look at an Old Testament story. That's, the, the whole story is just full of opportunities. But we're going to look at a specific part of it. So let's take a look at the book of Ruth. We're going to look at the first chapter, and I'm going to read to you the first, or the 16th and 17th verses. Ruth 1, starting with verse 16. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord, in this moment, speak to us. May this become an opportunity that we take advantage of. May the words that come out of my mouth and the things that all of us are thinking about in these next few moments. Bring a smile to your face. You who are our strength and our redeemer. We pray these things in the precious name of your son, Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. Well, I focused on those two verses for a reason. But just in case you, you're not familiar or maybe you've forgotten some of the story, let me share just a little bit more of this story to kind of catch up to date, at least to this point. Ruth's story is actually a part of Naomi's story. And at least it starts that way. The short version goes like this. Naomi and her husband and sons move away during a rough period of time in their home. They move to a foreign land, leave everything behind in these moments. They stay there for a while. Their sons marry. And then her husband passes away. And her two sons pass away, leaving Naomi and her two daughters-in-law, all as widows. Well, in that time, it, it became known that the, what had, was going on at their home had resolved, and so she decided she would go back home. And as they started to head out, she realized the problem and the predicament of the two daughters-in-law. The plan would have been that other men, men from the family would step in and would take them as wives, and uh, they would have a big happy family and everything would be good. But that was all of Naomi's children. There were no more. And so Naomi decided to release them from the vows. So that they could stay in their home. And have a chance at redeeming that life and having a life uh, at home with their families. So where we are is that leads up to these moments that, that I just shared of Ruth's words. They've gotten to a point, and Naomi has released them. And Orpah has agreed, the other daughter-in-law, and has kissed Naomi and said goodbye, and gone back to her family. But Ruth's response was a little different. Her response was a response to an opportunity. In the heat of that moment, Ruth made a choice, and it was a big one. She saw this as an opportunity, and she took it. She could have done like Orpah. She could have kissed Naomi and gone back to her family and probably married another nice young man and, and had a family and, and had a wonderful life. But Ruth chose to follow Naomi, to stay with her for whatever the future would bring. Ruth didn't know what that future would be, but she chose to stay with Naomi. She felt that staying with Naomi was the right choice. And we know from history that it was. Because if you know the rest of the Ruth story, Ruth became a part of the ancestral line of Jesus. So Ruth's staying in this moment was critical. I love how Ruth voices her commitment to this decision. Listen here again to these words. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. She told Naomi in no uncertain terms that she was committed to this story and was holding nothing back. She was fully invested. This was her decision. This 
was her decision to take advantage of this opportunity. Now I think about these moments where we have these opportunities and, and the moments where we make right choices, and we don't always do that, right? Like, we had an argument in our family, did my grandfather make the right choice in that moment? Uh, <laughs> But as I think about these right choices and these opportunities and these moments that pass, I realize that this book, the Bible, is full of stories about opportunities and the responses. I think about David and the opportunity that presented itself with Goliath. David committed to that opportunity, right? And the cost should have been very high. Everybody that was on the sidelines of that moment just knew David was walking in to meet his parable. So David committed to God, and he said, I'm going in. And we know how it came out. And the Bible is, is full of all kinds of stories like this. Just to name a few, I think of stories like Esther. I think of Samson. I think of Moses. I think of Peter. I think of Joseph. I think of Peter again. I think of Paul. I think of John the Baptizer. There's all kinds of story all throughout Scripture of different people and the opportunities that they stumble upon and their decision in the midst of it. There's even stories in, the, in Scripture of where they chose poorly, especially if you read the story about uh, the Exodus coming out of Egypt. But then there's the story of Jesus. His opportunity looks totally different than all the rest of them. And he also knew how his story was going to come out. When opportunity presented itself, he stepped in to offer himself as a sacrifice so that all of our sin might be forgiven. And we might not face the penalty of our sin and death. Jesus had the opportunity to save us all, and he took it. But his opportunity was to give himself as that sacrifice. To anyone who will accept him. And that breaks those bonds of sin and death. In the end, we all have opportunities every single day. Not the least of which is the opportunity to claim that gift that Jesus capitalized on his opportunity. And he offers you that life. That's one piece of it. Another piece of it is that we have opportunities every day to make this church the church that Jesus desires it to be. To move us closer and closer in that image. Before us every day are opportunities to glorify God, to introduce others to Jesus, to tell of His great love for each of us. All we have to do is take advantage of each one of these opportunities that come our way. In this moment, the opportunities are huge. In the life of this church, decisions are being made and discussions are being had that will either set this church up to be exactly what God has created and called it to be or lead it down a path of just a relatively unproductive existence. This is the opportunity that sits in front of this congregation. As we focus on God, God can lead us into the right areas that we need to go. It all depends on the choices each of us makes as we encounter each one of these opportunities. Ultimately, the opportunity to be used by God is the big thing. At the end of the day, the question is, how did God use me today? To achieve his purposes. That's the big opportunity. Won't you pray with me? Lord, in this moment we ask for a couple of things. One is that you would give us the eyes to see the opportunities that, that come into our path each and every day. Each and every moment. And we ask that you would give us the wisdom that we make the right choice in the midst of those opportunities. So at the end of the day, we can see clearly 
exactly how you use each one of us to achieve your purpose. Well, be with us and guide us. We pray these things in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. And all God's children said. Amen. Usher us join us. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful for all the gifts that you've given us. Lord, as we stand in the midst of this moment, this opportunity, we choose to worship you with our giving. Receive these gifts. Help them create for us more and more opportunities to glorify you. Bless these gifts. Use them in ways that expand us into more the kingdom and creation that you called and created us to be. We pray this again in the strong and mighty name of your son, Jesus, and all God's children say.
Now comes your opportunity to face, see what God puts in your path and respond. Go from this place taking advantage of all those opportunities, knowing that the God who created you and called you will never leave you nor forsake you. God bless you. Have a great one.